Hey, how's it going, YouTube? I'm back now, Bill, and today I'm gonna be talking why I think the Phoenix Suns could potentially not be as good as everyone thinks. Now, I know a lot of Phoenix Suns fans are probably gonna be pretty upset with this video, and understandably so. You just made the finals. What do you mean they're not the best or not as good as everyone thinks they are? Well, I'm be getting into a few reasons, and don't get me wrong, Suns fans, I'm not saying your team is bad at all, I am just saying I don't think they're as great as people think that they are. So I'm be getting into a few reasons in this video, so if you do like the video, any point, hit the like button and subscribe button, that would mean the absolute world to me. Without further ado, without roaming on too much, just get right into this video. Alright, so the first thing we get for this video is going to be that I just don't think that they are legit finals contenders, and a lot of people do have the Suns as being contenders since they did just make the finals last year, but as you know, that was a very circumstantial playoffs for the Suns a lot of injuries a lot of help for them to get to where they were at they played a fully healthy team and a legit contending level team at a full strength and they lost in six games to the Milwaukee Bucks. Now saying that they're not a contender is not me saying that they're not dark horse contenders. I do think that they're contenders, but in the same category like the Miami Heat, the Denver Nuggets, and teams like that. I think they're the dark horse contenders right under the real contenders. In my opinion, in the NBA right now, they have four legit finals contenders that are favorites to win the finals when fully healthy. And those teams are the Milwaukee Bucks, the Brooklyn Nets, the Los Angeles Clippers, and the Los Angeles Lakers. When all those teams are healthy, they're all by far the best teams in the NBA and it's not really all that close and assuming all those four teams will be at full strength going into the playoffs this season that's going to make it very very challenging for a team like the Suns to actually go on and win the NBA finals or make it to the NBA finals once again because look at it this way do you see the Suns this year beating a fully healthy Lakers team in a seven game series I do not I know they just won a regular season game but it's the regular season the second game of the year it means nothing okay these teams are gonna be two completely different teams by the time the playoffs come around so i do think for sure the lakers will be a better team than the suns if they stay fully healthy going in the playoffs if the clippers have Kawhi leonard and paul george the clippers last year without Kawhi pushed it to a six game series against the suns with just paul george so if you add Kawhi to that i'm sure they will be able to win those extra two games and they will also beat the suns in the seven game series and then if they somehow make the nba finals we already saw the milwaukee bucks beat them in a six game series in the NBA Finals and I think Kevin Durant and James Harden is good enough to beat the current Phoenix Suns so I think the Brooklyn Nets would also win a seven game series so that's why I don't see them as a legit finals contender because to be a legit finals contender there has to be at least like a question that you can compete with those elite upper echelon teams of the NBA but if you have questions and you can say that you highly doubt they would be able to pull it off realistically at least in a seven game series against those legit finals contenders then well you're not a real contender because you're not on the same level you're under them and although they are right under them it is a pretty big gap between those teams when fully healthy if you ask me so that's the first reason i think that since a lot of people since last year think oh this team's a legit finals contending team a legit top four top three team i just don't see that and i think the suns for what they are are probably a very good second round team and maybe a conference finals team but that's if they're playing a very very high level i think most realistically they'll make the second round and then get eliminated this season and now my second reason for his view is going to be the mismanagement of the team now what i mean by this is a lot of people forget this is still the phoenix suns before they signed chris paul this team was an absolute train wreck they were awful their front office was terrible and it is the same front office of when that team was awful for all those years the only difference is they were able to sign chris paul in the off season one year so if they don't make that one move that obviously is gonna make your team better it's not a big smart move to sign Chris Paul and your team gets better that is extremely obvious with his track record but without that one move what have they really done they do have Mikael Bridges I'll give them that and they drafted Devin Booker but DeAndre Aiden I don't really give them that much credit for because everyone had Aiden going number one overall that was not a challenging pick but if you look at their other picks they dra drafted people like Josh Jackson and Dragon Bender and Alex Lynn with very high lottery picks so we have seen this team be mismanaged many of times and it's kind of starting to rear its ugly head once again with the whole DeAndre Aiden contract situation 
only the sons uh okay the kings there's other not not only the sons but the sons are one of those organizations that can see a guy perform at the highest level on the highest stage be a huge piece to your team like a very important piece to your team and not give him the contract he wants and deserves deandre aiden if they don't extend him and they somehow let aiden get away from them that would be one of the biggest bag fumbles of all time aiden wants some max and honestly he kind of deserves a max contract without aiden you do not make the nba finals without aiden you don't even come close to making the finals actually because he was a huge reason for them to even be able to beat the lakers because when anthony davis went down aiden was the best big man in that series by far and the lakers had absolutely no answer for him and he also dominated in the uh denver nuggets series and the western conference finals and then all the way into the nba finals so it's not like he was playing bad or anything he was a huge piece to that big three and the fact that they're even considering not giving him a max contract because they don't want to pay him too much is insane to me like that would be the biggest blow to a team ever you lose your young star because you don't want to give him money we saw it happen with james harden now i'm not saying aiden is the next james harden or anything one because he's a big man and james harden's a guard but i'm just saying it's the kind of the same situation you have a young guy who isn't that even close to his peak yet and he's already playing at a pretty high level but you don't want to give him too much money so you let him walk and that would be a huge mistake for the phoenix suns and i don't think they're going to do that but the fact that it's even a possibility right now could show some very big red flags and it is even upsetting deandre aiden as deandre aiden has had reports saying he is very unhappy with the phoenix suns currently so i think for sure the phoenix suns need to get this situation under control very very soon and they better do it sooner rather than later because it could come back to bite them in the butt very very badly and also along the mismanagement side of things, they were able to pay Chris Paul a four year max deal. Now I'm not hating on the deal because honestly, you almost had to do it. You just made the finals. You had to re-sign Chris Paul. But I would hope that there was a way that Chris Paul would have signed a very big two year deal opposed to a four year deal. Cause the guy is 37 years old and will be around 40 to 41 years old by the time his contract is up and you'll be paying him 36 million dollars and the only player we've seen so far that's very very good at 40 years old is lebron james and honestly chris paul doesn't have the size doesn't have the athleticism and doesn't have even the iq of lebron now chris paul is an extremely smart player don't think i'm saying he's not it's just lebron's one of the smartest players of all time and we see him being able to do it i'm not sure chris paul will physically be able to do it when he is 40 so you're gonna be paying a 36 million dollar contract to a possible 41 year old who probably won't be giving you much of what he is giving you right now now i'm not hating on the contract i just think that they could have maybe shortened the contract a little bit and the fact that they were more willing to play chris paul a 36 year old a max deal but they're not able to pay deandre aiden his max deal when he is 23 years old is very very telling and that would upset me as well if i was deandre aiden and even a little thing they added they got cameron Payne, but the only reason i'm not that down on his contract is because it's only 6.5 million dollars which could be a little bit of an overpay because i mean honestly if he didn't get all the media coverage he got the dude only averaged 8.4 points per game and three assists per game now i know in the games i watched him he had a huge impact on the playoffs and he probably deserved the contract but i think it was more of him getting hot at a moment because most times nine times out of ten in the nba history if a guy randomly gets hot and he hasn't been that good his entire career and then he randomly gets hot towards the playoffs well then that kind of kind of evens out after a while and it's only been three games but through the first three games for the phoenix suns Payne is only averaging 28% from the field, and it at least is giving the possibility for Payne's old habits to be coming back. And the old Cameron Payne is in China. So hopefully Payne does end up getting better and that contract doesn't look bad at all. But if he goes back to China campaign and you're and you're paying him $6.5 million, that could also look pretty bad. So I'm not hating on either one of the Payne contracts or Chris Ball contracts just yet, but I could see them coming back to buy him in the butt and they need to pay Aiden. Please pay Aiden, dude. Please. If you don't pay Aiden, that'd be the most Phoenix Suns thing that has ever happened 
in NBA history. So please just resign the guy. But of course, you guys, that's me for this video. So comment below. Do you agree with me? Do you think the Suns could be a one-year wonder type deal? Any other thoughts in the comment section below? If you like the point, hit like button, subscribe button, mean the absolute word to me. And I hope you have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. So you need to have a blessed day. All glory to God. See you in the next video. Goodbye. Boo. Blah.